Okay, so today we are going to get started working on our basic Bluetooth low energy Android scanning app. And first, I'm going to run the template code app and show you what's going on with it. And then after that, I will walk through some of the files in the template code. And if you haven't already, there's a link in the video description to that template code. You'll want to download the Bluetooth low energy Android tutorial number one or something like that. I forget what I named it, but it should be pretty easy to find. After we run through the template code, uh, that's at that point, we'll finally get started writing some code and it'll be super exciting and awesome and amazing. Um, but yeah, okay, so first running the app. Right here in the background, I have an iPad 3 running the Light Blue Explorer app that I mentioned in the previous video. You can see, or hopefully you can see, um, I apologize for the potato quality. Um, I don't quite have amazing camera access, but I'll just point out everything. So right here, we have the virtual peripheral. It's called Cool Service, or not Cool Service, it's called Cool Peripheral. And when we click onto it, we see that there is the UUID of the peripheral, and then we see the service. There's a UUID for it as well, and it has three characteristics, each with a read, write, and notify property. So we are going to turn it on. So it's on right now, and the iPad is emitting Bluetooth low energy data. And then we have the Android device that we're going to use, or that I'm going to use. It is a uh, Blue Studio 5.0, I believe. Um, I don't remember exactly, but anyways, we're going to run the app and so you can see it and there is the start button, start scan button at the bottom. And when we click on it, and so it says scan button pressed and, uh, nothing. Okay. Oh no, nothing shows up. How could this be? Um, well, that's because we haven't quite written the Bluetooth code, obviously. So we are going to get into that right now. First, looking at the files in this code, we'll open up projects and you can see, uh, files here. So the first one is the broadcast receiver underscore BT state. And basically this will detect when the Bluetooth on the device changes state. So when you turn Bluetooth on or off, some toast notifications will pop up and let you know what's going on. This class doesn't do anything more than this and we will likely not go into it at all. I just created it so it can help you with debugging. Besides that, don't worry about it. The next one is BTLE underscore device. This is a wrapper class for the Bluetooth device objects. We need it to store the RSSI values when our scanner detects the device in the Bluetooth devices in the wild. And then we have the list adapter BTLE devices. This is a list adapter that will update the user interface as our device detects BLE devices and adds them to our lists. We will be using them to fill out the data that has to be displayed in that list. If you aren't familiar with list adapters and you want to know more, feel free to send me an email or, or message me. And then skipping main activity, we go to utils. Um, which just has some extra functions I created and separated from the main code to reduce clutter and hopefully confuse people less. And then finally we have main activity. So walking through the methods in this class since it's much bigger than all the other uh, Java files. So in onCreate, the very first thing we do is check if the phone is Bluetooth low energy capable. Right here. So if your phone stops and exits the app at this point, it probably means your phone doesn't have Bluetooth low energy abilities. You'll have to find another phone that does if you want to continue. 
Next, we instantiate the broadcast receiver. And then we also instantiate the list that are going to keep track of the Bluetooth devices. And then we instantiate the adapter that will update the user interface as our lists change. And then we add the list view to the UI right here. And then we change the text that's inside the button. Or, I mean, not the text, but we set an on-click listener for the button. And then in our on start and on stop methods, um, we don't use on resume or on pause, but in our on start and on stop, we register the Bluetooth state update receiver, um, which is going to tell us when the Bluetooth state on the device changes. Uh, you don't really need to worry about, about those functions, but, but they're there um, in case you want to know what they're about. And then on activity result, this also has to do with the Bluetooth state. When the app asks the user to turn on Bluetooth, a dialog will pop up, giving them the option to turn it on. When that dialog is exited, it will return to this method. Um, you don't need to worry about that either. Uh, I just have it there so that um, it'll remind you to turn on the Bluetooth on your device if you have it turned off. Otherwise, the, the app isn't going to work. And then in the next method, we have on item click. This method is called whenever an item is clicked in the list view on the user interface. We'll need it in future BLE tutorials, but for now, we won't be using it for our scanning app, so you don't really have to worry about it. And then finally, we have the onClick method, which is called whenever the scan button is clicked. We will need to we will need it to activate our BLE scanner and tell it to start scanning. Okay, so we'll stop right there, and in the next video, we'll actually start writing some code.